two tampons may mean my marriage is over. I, 29 female, have been with my husband, 30 male, for seven years, married for four. I've never had a reason to suspect that he was unfaithful to me or even remotely dissatisfied with our marriage. He likes to joke that we're still living the honeymoon phase nearly five years and two kids in. I wouldn't have questioned that or him were it not for a surprise I found in his car last month. When buckling our daughter into her car seat, I noticed something slotted between the cushions. I pulled it out and saw that it was a tampon. This wouldn't have been so unusual had I not had an IED that had stopped my period for the past year, and I didn't even recognize the wrapper style. I brought it to my husband's attention, and he didn't seem to understand what it was, let alone why I was holding it, until I told him where I'd found it and why I was almost certain it wasn't mine. He shrugged and said it probably belonged to his coworker Fiona. It's not uncommon for my husband to carpool to lunch with his coworkers. We're both fairly close to Fiona and her husband so I figured it was entirely possible the tampon had slipped out of her purse whenever he had driven with them or offered her a ride. No big deal. I put it out of my mind until we had dinner with Fiona and her husband a couple weeks later. I sincerely wanted to believe my husband. I just couldn't get over the way it had been tucked in the seat and how my husband had seemed not to have any regard for it whatsoever. Maybe playing dumb. I don't know. I did something that I now feel kind of crazy for doing. I faked an emergency and asked Fiona if she had any tampons while we were out together. She handed me one almost identical to the tampon I'd found in our back seat. I breathed a sigh of relief. So the tampon there was probably the same tampon here, and in all likelihood, there was an innocent explanation as to why it had been left in the back seat in the first place. I thought I'd seen the last of the out of place feminine hygiene products until I found another tampon this morning, this time in my sock drawer. I feel physically ill at the thought of my husband having an affair and even more nauseated at the thought that the woman might have left these tampons out for me to find. If it was my husband's coworker, why would she give herself away by offering me one the other night? In any situation, I would want to talk to my husband about this, but I feel too sick and embarrassed to approach him with what I found. What should I do? I hired a PI to watch my fiance on her girl's trip, and now I'm torn. My fiancé and I have been together for five years. Every year, she goes on this girls-only trip with her close friends. Something in my gut has been bothering me about these trips. Maybe it was the slight changes in her behavior afterwards, or the cryptic conversations I'd overhear. Instead of directly confronting her, I did something I'm deeply ashamed of. I hired a private investigator to watch her during her recent trip. I got back the results a few days ago, and as much as I regret violating her privacy, my suspicions were not unfounded. The PI presented evidence of her being unfaithful. It shattered my heart. Now I'm caught in this storm of emotions. On one hand, I deeply regret snooping and not trusting her enough to talk about it. On the other, the betrayal from her side feels even more significant. I love her, but I can't see a future together anymore. How do I approach the situation? Do I confess my snooping or just end things without revealing the reason? Do I tell a woman her husband has been cheating on her with me? So this happened last month where I met a guy online and we clicked instantly. We ended up meeting at a private location where we talked and ended up having sex unprotected. We kept talking about a week later and he came to my apartment where we had unprotected sex again. We mutually told each other that we had feelings and wanted a relationship. He revealed that he was married and that his wife is pregnant. I can confirm that she is. We immediately cut things off and I was super hurt and distraught. I wanted closure and an explanation, so we had a phone call where he told me where he was at in his relationship. He said he loved his wife and kids, but only cheated because things have been hard. He did genuinely feel guilt and remorse, I could tell. He told me that if his wife found out, he'd lose his kids, which was his biggest fear. I told him I wouldn't say anything because my mom cheated on my dad, and it ruined my life, so this couldn't be my job to do that. I don't want to do this to a family, but at the same time, it would kill me to know that my husband cheated on me with an 18-year-old while I was pregnant. So what I'm wondering is, do I message his wife, or do I leave it alone and forget that this chapter of my life ever happened? My entitled sister-in-law wants custody of my baby. I, 36 female, have been married to my sister-in-law's 40 female brother for over 10 years, and there's always been some jealousy and resentment from her. She's always felt like I had the life she wanted, not necessarily with her brother, but the marriage, family, job stability, etc. 
I have three kids, 10 female, eight male, three months female. She got married last year and they decided to start trying for a baby, but she was unfortunately told that she can't have children naturally. She was understandably devastated and the family comforted her as best as we could. We recently had a family dinner and in the middle of it, she says, hey, I think it's really unfair that you got to have three kids and I can't have any. Your baby is my last chance to raise a kid, so I think you should give her to me during the week so I can create a motherly bond with her and you can have her on the weekends. Before I could even respond, the entire table erupted with everyone talking at once so I took my older kids upstairs. When I got back to the dining room, her husband was asking what the hell is wrong with her and why she would even think to ask that. She was trying to justify herself when I asked them to leave. I also said that she's no longer welcomed at my house or around my children until she gets help. She started screaming that I don't deserve my life or my children and that I stole her baby from her. Her husband and mother-in-law kept apologizing and dragged her out of the house, still crying and screaming. Now my kids want to know why their aunt wants to take the baby. We have a security system and cameras already installed and no one has keys to her house. I will not be able to get a restraining order as this one incident isn't enough to justify it. My husband and I spoke to the older kids about it the same night and we'll be having another talk with them to reinforce that sister-in-law is not a safe person anymore. I'll also be informing the school and daycare of the issue and giving them her photo. My entitled sister-in-law wants custody of my baby part two my sister-in-law has been admitted to a psychiatric facility after the incident her husband sought out a psychiatrist rather than a counselor and they had their first session last week i didn't get the specifics of what happened but basically she made some statements that the psychiatrist felt indicated that she was a danger to others my baby and me and she was placed under an involuntary hold my brother-in-law has been nothing but apologetic throughout this whole entire ordeal, and he kept her away from us since the incident. Mother-in-law was staying with them to keep an eye on sister-in-law. She also tried to leave the house in the middle of the night to see her baby. Also, brother-in-law found her researching how to induce lactation, and she said it was to make sure she can feed the baby properly when I come to my senses and give her up. From what brother-in-law has said, seeing me breastfeed is apparently what triggered the entire episode. It was the first time sister-in-law was around the baby for any length of time, and she was holding her when she got fussy because she was hungry. Naturally, I took her to feed her, and this made sister-in-law feel inadequate because it triggered the thought that she would never be able to do that, which led to the events of the last post. I'm grateful for all the advice that was offered on my last post, as some of it was really helpful. We won't be moving as it's not feasible for us at the moment, but we have taken extra steps with security both at home and at this kid's school and daycare. This whole thing is taking a toll on the family, but mother-in-law, father-in-law, and brother-in-law are taking care of sister-in-law, and my husband and I are focused on ensuring the safety of our immediate family and minimizing the effects on the kids as much as we can. Am I the asshole for leaving my boyfriend when his ex died, leaving him to take care of his kids full-time? I, female 26, I've been with my boyfriend, male 30, for two years now. He has two kids, male 6 and female 4, with his ex-girlfriend. She moved to another state with the kids to be near her family when they broke up three years ago. He got them on vacations only. I knew all this when I started dating him. I had no issue with this, but told him forefront that I can't be a parent. I was parentified by my mom and raised my five younger siblings. The oldest of them is six years younger to me, and I had to change his diapers and feed him formula. He was also snipped after the last kid and didn't want more kids. He was fine with me not wanting to be a parent and just be a bonus adult. We were taking it slow and I didn't even meet his kids until a few months back. We took a trip together and got along great. Things changed two months ago when his ex died. The kids were really crushed as they moved into his new house. We were not living together, but he asked if I could move in to help him out, just for a while. I couldn't refuse and stayed, but I started hating it again. I hated how clingy the kids became and how much responsibility I had. I did my best, but my mental health started getting worse every day. I didn't even get help from my boyfriend, because he was struggling too. Last week was especially bad, since the younger kid had a cold and wanted me to nurse her back to health exactly as her mom would have. The soup wasn't the same, the song and story wasn't told the same way, I didn't hug her the way that her mom did, etc., were some of the long list of complaints. I know she is grieving, but I was already working from home and stressed too. When I told my boyfriend he should take over, he said they need me more since I am a mom. 
it triggered me. I didn't want to be held to mom's responsibilities again. I told him I can't do this. He said I needed to stop acting like a child and step up. I understood if I stayed, my whole life would be like this. Never measuring up, never being enough. And all the responsibilities of a mom. I left yesterday, moved in with a friend. My boyfriend, ex-boyfriend, is blasting my phone, calling me an asshole. My wife is addicted to making up Reddit stories for TikTok and is ruining this marriage. My wife of three years, age 25, has been constantly on Reddit and TikTok for the past eight months to the point where they both take up anywhere from 9 to 13 hours of her battery usage. She got into them heavily after I sent her one, and it just spiraled to the point where she is writing her own for clout, I guess. Two of them that I know she wrote herself were about a man whose dad thought he was cheating on his boyfriend and cut him off for a year, then coming back begging to reconcile. One that she showed me she wrote earlier tonight, where a 43-year-old woman found her husband cheating with their 20-year-old stepdaughter. What the actual f- by the way. That one she posted and has already gained so much traction that it'll probably be on TikTok by morning. We work at the same company and she has gotten written up for being on her phone multiple times to the point where she might get fired. I've tried to get her to go to therapy because a lot of these are disturbing scenarios she's writing about, but she says it's just a creative outlet. I'm worried for her and honestly, if she doesn't quit, I'm most likely going to separate from her as she's shown me such a dark and twisted side of her mind through these. My roommate does not use any toilet paper. First, we have two full separate bathrooms. Mine is in my room and my roommate's is in the hallway. It also has the laundry machines. Neither bathroom or toilet has a bidet. Separate showers. My partner and I took on a roommate several months ago to help with bills and I don't think I can live with him anymore. I've always bought and stocked all the toilet paper in the house. I started noticing that he just doesn't use it. When I go to restock his, the same amount of rolls are always there. Then I check the roll by the toilet and realize I'm the only one who has used it. Ugh. Barely any was missing from the roll and it has only been replaced once since he moved in. I do most of the house cleaning, so I pay attention to things that aren't clean and I notice stains that appeared on only his doors. Yellowish brown to black spots surrounding the handle and the bottom half of only his bedroom door and bathroom door. Nowhere else in the apartment really has these marks besides a few spots on the hall closet doors. So, after I realize the toilet paper mystery, I feel extremely disgusted living with him. Not to mention he wears his shoes in the house, I clean twice a week, and his bedroom and bathroom stink. Worse, he leaves his washing machine open and the bathroom odors get trapped in the machine filters. My clothes come out smelling like sh**. This is truly my nightmare scenario. I recently have finally received an opportunity to move out of an abusive home which was filthy, made everyone sick and smelled like a dumpster. I don't know if I can take this anymore. The smell of his room is so potent it clouds the hallway. I've tried talking to him about this stuff, but it's like he doesn't believe me. Maybe he's just stubborn, but he will literally argue with me over it. He wore his shoes in from the rain over the floors I had just mopped. He said his shoes weren't dirty because it's raining. I don't know what to do. My partner hates conflict, and they were friends for a long time. He also moved several states to live with us and doesn't know anyone here, so we both feel awful about potentially finding a new roommate, not to mention trying to find one who's respectful. Is there a reasonable explanation for this? Could he only poop at work even if he's off two days? Then how would the odors get in his bathroom in the first place? Am I the asshole for not giving my sister her wedding dress because she didn't invite my underage son? I, 40 male, have a sister, 30 female, who's getting married in a week. The groom proposed to her a year ago at a family dinner that left everyone speechless, but very happy for them as they are longtime companions. During this dinner, my sister asked my son, 17 male, to make her wedding dress. My son has always loved design and fashion, he took technical courses in these areas and sewing, and even his friends keep asking for his clothes because they are so beautiful. He agreed, but said that he needed time and that he would need her opinion constantly. At first, my sister was very annoying. My son drew about 50 dress designs in a month, and she only liked one, which he continued with. He sewed it with great quality fabric, which I paid for, as I wanted to get involved in a certain way. For five months, he made several adjustments to suit her wishes, as she always complained about something. After a while, he arrived at the final model, and it was just amazing. 
My mother cried seeing my sister in the dress, and I confessed that I almost got emotional too. The problem was that last week, my son came to talk to me about the wedding invitation that had not arrived for him, but for other family members. I thought maybe he didn't need one, but it still felt weird. I messaged my sister raising this issue, and she replied that she didn't want any underage people at her wedding because there would be alcohol. I asked if she was going to make an exception for my son, but she cut me off and said no. There are no children in our family, my son is the only minor, so I didn't see any sense in this rule for family members. And to make matters worse, my son was very sad and cried because he spent months on this dress and couldn't go to the wedding. I was very upset and told my sister that she should look for another dress as soon as possible as she would no longer wear the one that my son had made. She called and yelled at me, saying I was being unreasonable and that I couldn't do this. My mother called me saying I should deliver the dress and follow the rules. But I didn't and hung up on her. Because of this, my family is divided. Many agree with me and condemn my sister's action, saying she could only make an exception, but another part says I'm unreasonable and I'm spoiling her big day. I don't think I'm being wrong, but just rational in paying her back in kind. So, am I the asshole? I, 30 female, caught my husband, 31 male, in an affair and I don't know how to move on. I suspected things had been going on for a while, but kept brushing it off. I thought he would never do that to me. Since around April, he's been refusing my attempts to have sex most of the time, sitting differently on the couch to where he's facing away from me. Little things. It's with one of our good friends. She came to my house a few weeks ago. She's texted me. She's pretending to be there for me. I found out because I rolled over and they were having a Snapchat conversation. She said she wished she could be there to hold him and he summarized that I tried to seduce him last night and mocked it. I confronted him and he admitted it. He said that it was only because quarantine was stressful. He does not want things to work out. He thinks of me as only a friend in his heart. When I told her husband, he confronted her and apparently they actually kissed back in February. I think at that moment, I was never going to be enough for him. We used to be so, so happy. The week before they kissed, we celebrated Valentine's Day together. He bought us a nice bottle of wine for our anniversary. We had fun. We were perfect. I don't know where to go from here. We've been married only about a year. I feel like he took so much from me and doesn't even want to go to therapy or work this out. I don't want to leave my house, but everywhere in it, I see him. He chose her. I've been cheated in every relationship I've ever been in. He was supposed to be my forever. I don't know what to do. I made therapy appointments, but I was also laid off last month. So I have too much free time to analyze every single moment where he might have been lying to me or where I made myself pathetic trying to cling to him. How do I start to get through this? I asked my boyfriend for alone time and he told me to pack my stuff and leave for good. My boyfriend, 29 male, and I, 30 female, have been dating since last summer. I live alone in an apartment in downtown D.C., and he lives alone in a house in Annapolis about 40 minutes away. Pre-quarantine, we did well with splitting weekends between the two places. Once days closed for COVID, we decided it made most sense for me to temporarily move in slash stay with him in a bigger space with a yard for the dogs. As you might imagine, it had its ups and downs. We were getting a crash course in living together in a space that wasn't really mine at all, having lots of important conversations, enjoying evenings cooking together and having wine while watching shows together. We've also been irritable due to drastic changes in our daily routines. I've continued to work full-time from home, plus overtime due to an even busier schedule, while he is only working half day once a week. He is bored. I am stressed with work and finding it difficult to decompress. I'm used to slash need quiet time to myself to recharge, and he likes a noisy household. TV's always on, music on top of that, chattering constantly about sports or jazz statistics or things only of interest to him. I tried saying I'm going upstairs to read or I just like some quiet time to myself and it bugs him that I don't want to do the things that he wants. I find myself becoming more snappy and short-tempered from constantly feeling drained, which isn't fair to him. Last night he wanted to watch the NFL draft, so I made plans to FaceTime my girlfriends upstairs while he did that. I'm used to weekly girls' nights and miss them as they're also my primary support network. I heard him downstairs complaining to his dog that I never want to hang out with him. After FaceTiming, I went down and sat on the sofa with him and said, Hey, I heard you talking to the dog. I came to hang out. How are your team's picks doing? He was irritable and replied, Ugh, it was quiet until you came down. I'm feeling like I can't win. All right, getting to the point now. I hadn't been to my apartment in over three weeks and needed to go check on it. It's not a building, it's in a row house. And pick up some prescriptions I couldn't have transferred. 
We were originally going to go together, but seeing this irritation with each other, I suggested I just go alone and take a night or so to myself to recharge and come back. This morning, when I grabbed some necessities for a night to myself, my laptop because I have to work over the weekend, some underwear, face moisturizer, he got upset and said I might as well take all my stuff and not bother coming back. I tried to talk through why it was so all or nothing for him. He said I clearly didn't want to spend time with him or be around him, so I can just go home for good and we can resume dating when the states open back up. He actually bagged up the remainder of my stuff and took it out to my car for me. I just wanted to read in silence, get my medications, water my plants, sleep in my own bed alone for a night, watch my own trashy TV shows without interruption. And now I think my relationship is over? I'm feeling frustrated that I attempted to handle this in a productive and proactive way and somehow screwed up. Today I fucked up by accidentally inviting my boss to my weekend getaway. So, I had been planning this weekend getaway with my buddies for months. We were going to a remote cabin in the woods to have some fun, drink some beers, and forget about work for a while. As the weekend approached, I was excited to finally take a break from my stressful job and just let loose. But here's where I messed up. I accidentally included my boss in the group message about the weekend getaway. I didn't realize it until I saw his response in the chat saying he was excited to join us. I immediately panicked because, let's be real, nobody wants to spend a weekend away with their boss. I tried to backtrack and come up with some excuse, but it was too late. My boss had already made plans to come with us, and there was no way out of it. So, I spent the whole weekend trying to have fun while also keeping a professional demeanor around my boss. It was the most awkward and uncomfortable weekend of my life.